that um, it's about time we make some choices. I, I think tough times are coming. And um, you know, remember we talked about to, to uh, Ben Sherwin, I don't, uh, Sherwood, I don't remember the name of his book, um, but it was uh, about survivors. And the people who survive are the ones who make the choices in advance. Before the plane goes down, they're the ones who go, Where, how would I get out if that engine caught on fire? Those are the survivors. You need to make some decisions and some choices. And I don't know if you can pick this up, but I, I write down uh, notes. And I wrote this uh, picture down uh, Saturday morning. I want to show you what, what it is. I, I was thinking this weekend, it's the time of um, sitting on the fence, it's over. It's over. You have to make a choice, and you have to make a choice now. Our choices are, and most of us are kind of standing over here. We're on the fence, but we're leaning in this direction. Socialism, acorn, oh, what difference does it make? Partisan politics, we both play them, Republicans and Democrats. I've played them myself. We have to make the choice. Easy money, yeah, it doesn't matter. Everybody's doing it. Easy money, no responsibility. I don't want to be held responsible for those things. No blame, not my kid. And a level playing field. That leads to socialism, my friend, and slavery. Here's on the other side. The other side of the fence, consequences. This doesn't sound like fun. Consequences, hard work, effort, self-reliance, honesty. Honesty, even to ask the tough questions, to ask the questions that you don't want to ask. Even if the answer is something horrid and you don't want that answer, if it's the answer, live with it honesty with ourselves fetal position i wrote this down because at one point in my life i was in the fetal position i was this is uh what 15 years ago 16 years ago i was about to give up and i was in the fetal position and i decided you know what no i am going to fight on i'm going to change my life the fetal position leads to great rewards if i hadn't have had that moment i wouldn't be here and i know a lot of people in america would like that but i wouldn't be here and finally freedom ask yourself this my friend which side of the fence are you on get off the fence and either firmly be here or firmly be here because it's time we made some tough decisions there's a lot of hard work in front of us Keith Ablo he's a he's a psychiatrist a Fox News contributor and a good friend of the program Keith I you know it, Oscar and I were just talking in the break I, you know, I've got these people coming out of the woodwork after me, and that's fine. I expected it. Um, however, they probably wouldn't think they could get away with it um, if more people would just take a stand. If more people would stand up and say, you know what, I don't care what you do. I'm not giving up my principles. Right? They're trying to scare that's people, absolutely. trying to scare people to not follow this road. That's exactly right, Glenn. And, and, you know, they've got the wrong man in you because you've seen uh, dark moments. Uh, and you've decided, you know what, I'm keeping my eyes open even in these dark moments. I'm going to see what's happening. That is the antidote here. We need people who are resolute. Uh, we need people who can see what's happening and speak to it. You know, one way to demoralize a child, if you believe yourself to be a parent, as the government apparently is parentifying itself, saying, I'm not even going to talk to you people who spilt milk. I'm not going to talk to you. You don't even deserve to know why I'm so angry. You're disenfranchised. Go to your room. Okay? And one way to further demoralize that child who you won't listen to in any way, and you've already said you're a child, by saying, go to your room and do not speak is to say anytime someone says that you've struck out, it could be your younger sister, your younger brother, it's you, man. I'm not even gonna ask you whether it was you. It's you. So You're Keith, to blame. It's, it's not the other person. I, I wanna ask you this, because I can't come up with a reason, um, and, and you're being a psychiatrist, you might know. I can't come up with any decent reason on why the president has been so silent on um, this, this whole thing. How, how is it he can come out and say, um, or he can have all of his minions come out and say, hey, speaking out against this is un-American. He can organize all of these things through organizing for health care, his website, and yet he'll say, oh, these are just nobody, these are just, these are just crazy people organized by the right. How, how, what is he playing in his, how does this end in his, in his head? Well, what I fear is, and again, look, I, 
I haven't sat with the president for a 50-minute hour, right? I'm not his therapist. But what I fear is that you must be disenfranchised, look disenfranchised, and have said you have fallen out of the system, not be someone who has worked within the system, in order to gain his heart. Right now, you'd think that the president as therapist-in-chief would say, boy, there's a lot of anger out there. i got to listen more. I I'm missing something here, and I want to hear it. Instead, there's something that's not quite right here, and you're detecting it, Glenn which is that he's not able to do that if you are someone who has worked within the system, for whom it, it has worked quite well. It seems like he, he sort of cut himself, he made himself speaking for the disenfranchised, and you must look like the disenfranchised in order to gain his patience and understanding. Do you think it's that, or do you think he's, he's um, intentionally being quiet? He's a good chess player, I think. This man is brilliant. He's a good chess player. Is it possible? that the president is, um, is as silent as he is and, and ramping up. Every, it's almost like they're poking with a stick all the time, over and over, poking, 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 poking. On April 15th, his spokesperson came out and said, yeah, he doesn't even know who these Tea, tea Party people are. That's a pretty big poke. Is there the possibility that, that he is um, staying so quiet so if, God forbid, something happens on either side, it doesn't matter who does it, that he can step in and say, you know what, I stayed out of this because I didn't want to make this bad, but you know what, I'm, I'm cracking down because this is enough. You think there's a possibility uh, of that? Well, look, uh, you know, we talked about the purple shirts. I'm sorry, I'm wearing a little purple myself. Uh, but uh, yes, there's a possibility of that. Any time that you have what seems to be favoritism breaking as clearly as it is toward one group as opposed to another, you risk that, right? right? What's the next step for the parent? It's running upstairs to that kid's room saying, you did what to your little brother? I didn't do anything. Right. I don't want to hear it. Okay. That's where we're at, and it's very, very, very concerning. Thanks, Keith. I appreciate it. It's concerning to me, America, because there are billions and billions and billions, hundreds of billions of dollars at stake. That usually, people don't usually let go of that kind of money easily. Bad news, America. Dreams of a half-man, half-platypus, also known as the Humanipus, may be over. Wait, what? Glenn's got details. Next.